Okay, so my real purpose for making this video is to show you how I install a headliner in an Opal GT. Now, I'm no expert. I've only done this uh, once before. This is my second car. Um, I did, however, spend several years delivering and installing slate pool tables in people's houses, and you have to stretch the velour green felt uh, over the surface of the slate in a very, very similar fashion to what you do when you install a headliner. You can see that I've got all these little red clips everywhere. Those are called binder clips and I've got uh, several hundred of them, about twenty dollars worth. Almost two hundred of the small size red ones. There's uh, medium size ones that I'm using at the doorways and in the front and the back I'm using the large size. You could probably get away with just using, kept just buying a whole bunch of medium or the smalls. Uh, keep them piled up up here, using ones as, uh, as needed. So, the first thing you want to do with a headliner is to spread it out on the carpet or your basement or wherever and totally unfold it to try to let the wrinkles work themselves out. Now I only opened the package after sitting on it for nine months uh, yesterday and I just put it on the car. Okay now the headliners are roughly shaped like a cow skin and have uh, longer parts that come down sticking out so that you can upholster your uh, A, B, and C pillars. Um, down the middle, well not down the middle, but going across are three rods in the middle and over here. There is a pocket, kind of like the pocket that you slide a curtain rod into and the rods slide into those pockets and get anchored in three holes that point almost straight out uh, in the roof uh, that have little spring clips inside that basically limit how far in the rod can go and inside that roundish metal clip is a little spring to kind of keep tension on the rod. The rods are in three different sizes, or actually two different sizes, and then the, the two that are the same size lengthwise have a slightly different bend to them. Uh, the point is, if you take your rods out, while well, do it, which you'll have to do when you're redoing the roof in your old GT, make sure to mark them front, middle, and rear and put them back in accordingly. What you'll notice right off the bat when you get your new headliner and decide to slide your rods in is that the pockets are longer than the rod. You can slide the rod completely into it and there's still about two inches on each side of the pocket uh, where there's no rod. For whatever reason they stitch those pocket. They cut those pockets and stitched them on extra long for gosh knows why. This worked out to about four inches of cloth of pocket uh, where I nipped it, or actually I cut it straight to four inches, and then the rod sticks out two inches from there. You want to uh, be able to slide or make sure that you've got. Uh, the headliner centered in your car. So there's my roof and I previously uh, insulated it with foil backed firewall sound deadening material. I had initially pulled out each rod from their pockets in the material 
And one thing I noticed is that the end of the pockets, they came to roughly the edge of the doorway. So you can use those as a guide to help you center the thing while you have it up there on rods. Okay, so when I took my rods out, yeah, they were rough and uh, they were grabbing at the fabric of the pocket. So I took some uh, Scotch-Brite pad and I lightly uh, scuffed the outside. I wasn't looking to take it down to bare metal or nothing and take all the zinc and stuff off. You only need this rod to slide back and forth in here this one time. So, you know, this isn't like some kind of crazy thing you gotta get, go wild on. But make sure your rods are smooth so that they'll slide back and forth. All right, now, there's the hole. There's my chain wheel bolt that I'm using instead of a clip. That's uh, what a clip looks like in the hole. And there's another one back there. And this is the uh, center of your roof. One rod goes in here. Ah. But look, what's this stuff? It's rough. Well, apparently there was glue or rust or something up there um, that wasn't sanded off before it got painted. And what I noticed was is that the fabric was all bunched up uh, here in the middle. And no matter how much I yanked, I couldn't uh, pull it loose. Well, it turns out that this rough sandpaper-like surface right here was uh, grabbing the uh, material of the pocket and not allowing me to pull it and tighten it to take the wrinkles out that were down the middle of the car. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some sandpaper and I'm going to sand that off. I then went and put some uh, high quality 3M packaging tape uh, over the area, smoothed it down real good, get any wrinkles out. And I'm now going to install the headliner. Uh, I tie wire between the rods because there's an issue that some people have where it flips where they flip down after they've installed it this is probably due to them not installing their headliner tight enough um, but still it remains a possibility um, so uh, I basically uh, run a wire looped around each rod I have to punch a little hole in the pocket to do that and I put a sheet metal screw at the front and rear roll bars sticking straight out and I tie off the wire once I've got all the rods stand in their holes and flipped straight up and partially suspending this thing uh, I then take the wire and I tie it I wrap it around the sheet, sheet metal screw tightly front and rear and that will assure that the rods can't move one way or the other, even if they want to. So, that's just something that I do. All right, I have put the first middle rod in with my now sanded area at the top here and the packaging tape put on there. And to my delight, I can now slide this thing back and forth with ease. So I can center the headliner uh, in the car just by looking at it from down here. As you can see, here's the end of the pocket coming just about to the lip of the doorway uh, flange. And over here, we're about a quarter inch away, so I'm going to 
slide it a quarter inch so there's a quarter inch sh short on each side then I also noticed that I had I could easily stretch and pull on the fabric to get any wrinkles out of the pocket around here this will affect how much wrinkling you have at the top of your headliner so you want those good and stretched out to the sides check the balance of your pocket and you're good to go we can now by the way this is my wire that I use and I screw it to a hole right here to keep the rods in place so here I'm gonna put the back rod in First into that spring clip. And then you flex the rod a little bit, bend it down, stick it in, and then you can either flip it up from uh, the front or you can uh, bow it and flip it from the rear. Basically, you want the bow of the rod as best as you can see it or guesstimate where it is. You want the arc of that rod to be at the highest point. So, I, oh, I need to be right about there. When I check my rods, look like they're they're pointing straight up. Okay, now measure the pocket from window to window. Could use a little more to this side. Okay. Okay, and my measurement works out pretty close. Let's go a little bit more to this side. And pretty good. Feeling the pocket. There's no wrinkles or bunches in it. I then can screw in what I call my stay put wires because they keep the rods stay put to get my nut driver out to screw that in show you what your car will look like when it's all hanging in there and so forth you can see my stay put wire is uh, drawn tight same at the back all right I've uh, anchored the front to this side I now have an equal amount of material from here to here on this side as I have on the other side. Here's a relief cut I cut in the fabric so I could get the material closer to the corner. First put the middle one in, then you put the ones here at the extreme on. Uh, hold the center one and pull the fabric uh, to stretch it sideways so that you can uh, have some proper tension on things. All right, now the next step is to uh, anchor the tops of the doorways and maybe a little bit of the side rear window. When you do the back of a GT, you don't grab the window flange on the sides. You grab 
This is the flow through air vent passageway here. And the material is actually clipped to the edge of that. All right, you don't want to roll your stuff all the way over and clamp it to here because then you'll block off your flow through ventilation. So remember, you do it here. So doing the rear window is the most difficult thing and the thing that uh, the rear side window, you'll be doing this part last. Pretty much after you've done the front and rear windshields, uh, front and rear windows, you're going to then do your doors. You're going to wait on the vertical parts going down. There's no hurry to do them uh, as far as in the doorway, in the A pillar and the B pillar. Um, and uh, the, the rear window is a combination of the upholstery of the panel that's below the uh, window and the headliner parts here. It's extremely difficult to get wrinkles out in this area and simultaneously pull, anchor, glue the material in place. Uh, the clips help a lot. But you may have to use other things like vice grips and pieces of wood and uh, C-clamps and things like that to kind of get, get the back done. like I had a lot of stretching happen overnight so this is actually my first retightening since I let this sit overnight with the new I'm probably going to just say screw it uh, we'll just have to let uh, time and heat um, from the Sun uh, straighten out those wrinkles and all I can do at this stage is just make sure that I tighten the headliner as much as I possibly can before I glue it and it will probably, uh, those wrinkles will probably straighten themselves out. The vinyl of the headliner gets attached to the window flanges and I'm a big fan of using goop in a tube. It's that stuff that uh, you use to glue the bottoms of your sneakers back on when they pull off. It's worked very well for me for 30 years. It never dries out and turns crystalline. It always stays somewhat in a pliable state, but it sticks like crazy. And it's commonly available at hardware stores, Home Depot, stuff like that. You're going to need about three, maybe four tube stuff. They sell it in three kinds, a normal, a household, and a marine variety. I've used them all. The marine type set quicker, but uh, pretty much things that are made for a boat are actually excellent to use in a car because they're made to withstand the same conditions. Heat, water, abuse, sitting outdoors. So basically the marine type of goop is ideal for a car since it's made for outdoor use. Okay, so it's a few days later. Got cold, now it got a little bit warmer and I'm uh, going to glue the doorways, top of the doorways, and the front and rear. Now, basically, it's a straight cross. You pull straight sideways for the center of the doorway and straight forward at the front and rear of the car. I would advise stopping your gluing about two or three inches before each pillar. Don't glue it. Don't glue the uh, top of the, uh, of the headliner all the way across the top of the uh, doorway or all the way across the front or rear of the car. Don't even do the side rear windows. 
Uh, the reason is, is you have to pull straight down to get this wrinkle um, out. You're going to have to do some trimming to relieve stress, but basically it's a straight down pull. If you try to do that with freshly applied glue at your various uh, locations here, you can end up pulling the fabric off of the, uh, the car. And you want, before you start doing your A, your A B, and C pillars, you want the uh, uh, glue to have hardened so that you can hard pull on the material to get the wrinkles out and get it fastened in place. So I'm going to leave that clip there and the clip at the other end and I'm just going to take off the ones here. Now the flanges are approximately three quarters of an inch at every location that you're folding the material around and so that's about 20 millimeter and that's pretty much where you want to stop because your door molding is three quarters of an inch. You don't want to glue extra fabric up onto the body of the car where you will see it. Now you're going to trim off this extra bit that sticks out. So you don't want to have it glued an inch and a half up the side of your doorway. Um, so when you apply the glue, make sure you don't leave big blobs behind. I like to smear a thin layer and I just use the tube of goop and um, I it's going to take you like uh, I don't know, it's going to take you a few tubes of this, so make sure that you have like two or three tubes of goop around so that you can finish the job. Um, I apply some to the flange and maybe smear it. Keep some rags around so you can wipe off your fingertips because it's going to be on your fingertips when you then grab the material and pull it tight to put the clip on. Uh, when I put the clips on, uh, I spring them open, I put them on the tip or the edge of the flange, and then push it in. This way it acts like a squeegee and makes sure that it applies pressure with the material onto the flange and helps to distribute the glue and make sure the glue is pressed on because the, the, the clips only have apply pressure at the very tip. They don't at the back of the clips. So you want to stick them on there and then push them on the rest of the way. You can then take a peek to see if you have squeegeed extra glue um, out beyond the point where you want it. What do you do if you put too much on and you do see a big blob of glue there? Uh, uh, it's not a good time to deal with that. Just don't put too much glue on. Um, you could decide you put a piece of painter's tape across there about one inch or three quarters of an inch from the edge of the flange. Uh, that might work. Um, might not. Uh, you might try packaging tape. Uh, blue painter's tape will tear if the glue is holding on to it too well, whereas uh, packaging tape, uh, being clear, um, uh, tends not to tear like that, and any extra glue will go on top of the packaging tape, and then you can just grab it and go zip and pull off all that extra. The glue pretty much sets in about an hour, and you got to work fast. Um, you got a couple of minutes, basically, to apply the glue and pull on the fabric, pull it up, slide your clips on. I like to do about a uh, six inch long area. I start in the middle and pull off th three clips. And the flan, you're, I've pulled on it. There it is. Um, just smear some uh, glue, um, about a half an inch, um, no more, than from the edge of the flange. Then you know, give it a yank, 
put your clip on, give this part another yank, put your clip on, this part. Now you can do the next section. And I would take off these three clips and leave that one there because I'm not ready to deal with the A-pillars yet. You want this area done. And I'm going to pull three clips off. Got a little bead of glue sticking out of the tube already. And I'm going to butter the flange just a little bit. You don't have to do every square inch of the thing. Now I'm applying some glue directly to the fabric, the cloth backing, and it's really important that you get that smeared into the fabric so that it gets a good grab and a little bit get on the body there. It's okay if it gets on the body, it'll, you can peel it off. Okay, so I wipe my fingers off where I touched it. I start in the middle. I give it a pull. Slide my clip on to the tip. Push it in. Next one. Pull. Clip it onto the tip. Push it on the rest of the way. Pull. Put the clip on. I don't see any blobs of glue that have gone too far. I'm ready now to do this section. And there we go. Right now, got a little bit on the body there that will rub right off. You can take a rag, a dry rag, that doesn't have glue on it, and you can actually wipe it entirely off. Got a little bit there, and there we go. So here's some more medium-sized ones. I'm going to take off these right here and I'm going to put glue on the flange I'm going to smear it on I'm then going to apply some goop to the fabric to smear it on. Now you can sort of stick it on there if you want and smooth your fingers on it to spread and make sure that the material is all getting contacted and the glue is getting on everything. And I want to make sure the glue holds and the areas in between. I'm going to put clips there also. I may have spread glue as far away as down here. Okay, so that is basically it. I'm going to go do the uh, other doorway and the rear window, and then that's going to be it for today. I'll do more maybe later this evening. I only need to wait an hour, so I could come out. But it's not quite warm enough today. I just wanted to get this little simple. This is the simple part. The areas that you just pull straight. And uh, that's about it. Okay? I'm all done doing the door tops of the doorways and the front and rear. As you can see, I added extra clips in between the other ones. Make sure I'm squeezing the glue evenly. I bought like 250 clips, so might as well use them.
it occurred to me that you don't actually need to smear the goop on the fabric. If you put a nice bead on the flange, you can take the material and stick it on top of it. And when you peel it back, you'll have the, the extra glue that was there will be on the fabric. You're done. You take it, pull it, put your clips on, and you're done. As you can see, I have removed all the clips along the front and all the clips where I glued things there have been removed. I just have one last one there and the other one. And I'm going to show you doing uh, the A pillar just a bit. It's really just tips and tricks. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the material they give you ends right here. And that can only go down about that far. Whereas down here, they give you enough material to go all the way down to meeting the body panel uh, that has um, its own upholstery. That's because the stresses here uh, aren't weird and it's a fairly easy job to pull the fabric down and out to the sides kind of simultaneously and then kind of grab it with you could grab it with your fingers and slide clips on I have put a little I've cut out some of the material right here and I cut no farther than the edge of the lip you gotta be careful with your cutting don't be cutting material until you're absolutely sure that you've got all your wrinkles out, everything's pulled tight, and the way you have things is going to work. General rule of thumb, when you cut, don't go past the edge of the flange. Your rubber will cover that. If you go past the flange on the inside, like if you just went cut, 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 you're going to end up with a cut mark on the inside. <laughs> Obviously, you don't want to see that. Now, your window rubber will extend a little bit over that, but as a general rule, don't cut past the flange. So... I've got a very substantial wrinkle here and I need to relieve stress so I'm going to put a relief cut right here and I'm under a lot of stress up front here And now I can feel on the inside that my wrinkle is gone. You can see uh, material has settled in. So now I can pull both ends down and over. This one can get a little bit more of a cut right towards the corner. This little part here is not really needed, so I'm going to snip him off. I don't need all this up here. I'm going to snip that off. I'm only concerned about getting the material to be smooth and non-wrinkled as it gets to the corner here. You're going to do a straight cut across the fabric and you'll just have that edge uh, laying straight across on the inside. The, ec the uh, headliner comes with extra material so that you can do your pillars and any other areas 
where you need stuff. So what I will, I'm just going to cut a little bit of this off in a straight line. So what you'll do with your extra material, which you'll use a piece wider than this, but if you just take a little bit of goop and smear it on the cloth backing, you can then fold it over and, you know, clamp it somehow or pile a book or a piece of metal on it to hold it nice and tight and flat with no lumpiness. And now you have a nice edge that you can overlap the leftover of the headliner and make a nice clean transition from one to the other. So I'm going to sit in the car and take a look at things. Make sure I do in fact have the wrinkles out. No, don't really need that clip. Don't really need that clip. And I'm going to do straight cut across here. So I'm going to put some goop right here. Pull it down, pull it out, and put my clip on the edge, and push it in. A lot of stress here in the front. I'll put a little bit of glue there and I'm gonna have to actually stick some of the fabric to the inside because I don't have any lip on this side to bend it over Material on it. Smear it around. Now the glue is fairly evenly distributed. I'll grab some clips. I'm going to Pull this one up there. Putting these very close together because the material's under a lot of stress and might want to pull away. I also have to finish some gluing here. Let's put the material on it. Spread things around. Grab some more clips. Pull. Stick it on the edge. Push it in. Pull. Stick it on the edge, push it in, pull, stick it on the edge, push it in. I can even relieve a little bit of stress now that I've got everything kind of held in place. And that will work. Now this car has had its roof chopped off 
when it was a gull wing and I chopped the roof off my old Red Baron car and had it welded on and I've got a uh, bead of welding stuff here so I will always have a lump right here where there's a bead of welding uh, when I put the vertical piece of upholstery on I should be able to hide that transition but other than that I've got good tension on my headliner and wrinkles have diminished a lot uh, doing this pillar here will be fairly easy as long and you can probably just decide to do this edge with glue because you'll need that anchored well to then do good pulling at the uh, back window the C pillar is just flat out hard to do and the back of the side rear windows have forces pulling from all sorts of directions it's just really hard um, there's no rule of thumb tip or trick you're just going to have to take your time be very minimal about cutting any ma excess material to, to relieve stress and uh, you know, think about where your window rubber is going to be once you put it on because that hides your mistakes and so keep that stuff in mind and take your time use lots of little clamps and glue don't be in a hurry do a little section walk away and you should end up with a nice headliner okay just to uh, wrap things up, a few days later I've installed my louvered windows, but you can see the results. I've glued all around. There's the vent area. And you can see I've taken a razor blade and trimmed off the excess material. My upholstery is nearing completion on the inside of the car. The big trick to that I did mention earlier in the video is throw the whole headliner in your dryer, your clothes dryer, for about 10 minutes. And it will miraculously take care of the wrinkles. So that's it. A uh, little uh, tutorial on how to put in a Opal GT headliner.